In part one, we used a pre-built link to SQL data model. Let me show you how I added it to the project. So I'm going to add a new data type called link to SQL classes, and this is for the Northwinds database. So what we see here is the Visual Studio 2008 um, object relational designer surface. And it's here that we can go and create different entities and classes and their associations. But because I have, using the Server Explorer, I can get to my Northwind database, I can create these entities just by dragging and dropping them onto the surface like this. So we have products and their categories. I can also do it with something a little more complex like a view for my invoices. So behind the scenes, this is creating either the C-sharp or the VB.net uh, wrapper data context object that you saw me use in part one. Um, it's from here, well, essentially every, every product that is treated as an instance called product, but notice what, notice what happened. The products table, see how it's pluralized, is brought over as singular, and the categories table was brought over and made singular as well. So behind the scenes, it's following some um, English rules for, for pluralization. If you don't like it, you can simply double click on it and change it to my product. Um, this system also supports stored procedures. I have a few of them here. Let's take the 10 most expensive projects. And there's the source for that. I could add it to this data context by right clicking and choosing add new stored procedure. Oh wait, <laughs> that's not it. That's how you add it to the database. Let me add it to my model by dragging and dropping it. Now, it's funny, the first time I did this, it looked like it didn't work. That's because you have to right click and choose the show methods pane. And here it is. So my data context now has this 10 underscore most expensive products, and that maps to the stored procedure. There are other things that this uh, surface gives you. If you don't, if you want to change the associations, you can see that there's a relationship between category and my product. For every category, there are one or more my products. In addition to the foreign key category ID, in this case, say beverages is number one, so we have chai tea as an instance of product. Data context will have a category property, which will be the specific category ID that we're talking about. So you'll get um, product my product dot category dot category name. Um, but inside there, you might not want all the details. For instance, this picture data type bringing up the properties can be large, and if you don't want that data property loaded, I just lost it. Let's see. If you want if you want it loaded um, only on demand, you can choose an option called. Where is that? Delay loaded equals true. Because this is an image type, it might be something large, and so it won't load the picture content until you actually reference or dereference that, that particular member variable. So let's see, we've got our entities, our relationships, we have a stored procedure available. We can delay load um, the image data or any data that we want. And finally, we can make one more modification. Let's say the product table. Notice we don't have to specify any SQL code. Um, unlike the data set and table adapter in Visual Studio 2005, this, this surface here in Link to SQL will just take care of that for us. If we do, however, want to specify stored procedures for manipulating the My Product table, we can provide those. Right now it's set to use runtime, but let's say you have some cascading delete logic, which uh, is not turned on for this database, but so you wanted to add that yourself you could choose when a product is deleted to choose from a stored procedure or create your own. That would go through and maybe delete the uh, related data as well. So there you have it. Everything on this design surface eventually comes up through the data context that you use in your, in your project to manipulate the data.